Jessica may have found one. He's kind of cute. Don't go near it. At first glance, if you're leafing through the newspaper looking at the ads, Hellboy 2 might look like the kind of summer movie that you'd prefer to avoid, a comic book derived sequel, and we've seen a lot of those, and uh, they get a little bit tiresome. But Hellboy 2, like Hellboy 1, is the work of one of the strangest, most interesting and perverse and just plain weirdest filmmakers out there, uh, Guillermo del Toro, who really blurs the line, I think, between genre entertainment and real works of art. He has a real interest in and, and a background in low-tech special effects, in prosthetic makeup, in set design, in mechanical creatures, and he's trying to create a real um, physical atmosphere. Balls. He's especially interested in dark, dank, wet, subterranean places and the and the creatures that might live under them, the kind of the the bugs and the fish and the slimy things. And um, in Hellboy, there's a lot that happens underground in sewer tunnels that are sort of wet and clammy, and then even under them deep in the murky waters where some magical eggs are, are hidden. Um, and there's a sense too of the underworld coming up and breaking through the surface. And that's also in a way what happens in The Devil's Backbone, which is a, a ghost story set during the Spanish Civil War in an orphanage. There's a very creepy, suspenseful atmosphere that he creates with, with very few special effects at all, using, in the case of The Devil's Backbone, very traditional suspense movie means. And there's a similar atmosphere in Pan's Labyrinth, which takes place in the woods at a, at a, at a, a, a fortress, a fascist military um, garrison. The main character there is a, is a little girl who reads fairy tales and enters into this fairy tale world. And she has a, a terrifying encounter with a with a with a pale skinned creature who's um, who can and remove his eyeballs and, and and put them into his hands. There's something very primal and elemental about these images. They are the kind of things that uh, the unconscious of a sensitive bookish child would, would cook up. And that's what I think makes Del Toro's work so interesting and so rich, is that it's not just about fantasy. These are fantasy movies of various kinds, whether they're metaphysical superhero movies like the Hellboy movies, or they're political allegories in the guise of ghost stories or fairy tales like Pan's Labyrinth and The Devil's Backbone. But what they really are is, is stories about human emotions and fears and terrors, and they use these monstrous, strange, creepy images as a way of giving shape to those fears.